Here's a quick introduction to binary search. We're given an array that's sorted, that just means the numbers go up in one direction or the other. And given an element x, let's say, we're trying to find if it exists in this array. And also, if it exists, what's the position of x? So if x is equal to 10, say, we want to find that it exists, and also that the position of x is 4. So here's binary search. Let's say x is equal to 10. So we are trying to find 10 in this array. And the way it works is we start with the middle element, or the one in the center. And if it's equal to x, then we are done. If x is smaller than this element, then we look for it in the left half of the array. If x is larger than this element, we look for x in the right half of the array. So in this case, since x is larger than 4, we're going to look for it in the right half of the array. And we're going to repeat the same procedure for this smaller subarray. We look at the element in the center, 40, and we see that x is less than this element. So now we can just look at the left half of this array to find x. And when we look at this element, we find that x is equal to 10, so we are done. So here's binary search implemented recursively. We're defining our function here, binary search, of the given array and the element we're looking for, x, and l and r. l keeps track of where the leftmost element of the current section we are looking at is. So L starts with 0, the leftmost element of the whole array. And R keeps track of where the rightmost element of the current section we are looking at is. And so R starts with 6 in this case. And if R is less than L, at any point we're running this function, that means these pointers are flipped, and we don't have any more elements to look at. So we didn't find x in this array. So we're just going to return negative 1 instead. And if that's not the case, the first thing we do here is we find the position or the index of the middle element. And we do that by l plus r minus l divided by 2. So in this case, that would be this one. So mid would be 3. If the element we're looking at, if the middle element is equal to x, then we are done. We just found x, so we're just going to return mid. If x is smaller than the middle element, then we're going to look at the left half of the array. So we're going to call binary search of the same array, the same x, and the same l, so the l doesn't change. But the new r becomes mid minus 1, right here. And if x is larger than the middle element, then we're going to look at the right half of the array, this part. So we're going to call the binary search the same function with the same array, the same x, and the same r. So r doesn't change in this case. But the new l becomes mid plus 1. Now let's look at the time complexity of the binary search algorithm. Let's just say we're looking at this long array of length n. We start applying binary search to this array, and the next array we're going to look at is going to be about length n over 2, and then the next one after that is going to have length about n over 4, and so on. And so the time complexity for the whole array can be written as the time complexity of the next array plus some constant. And this is a constant because we're repeating the same procedure over and over again. And we can write it as a recursive tree. So it starts with t of n, or the time it takes to apply the binary search algorithm to the array of length n and then it becomes c plus t of n over 2, and then that becomes c constant, another constant, the same one, and 
t of n over 4 and so on until we get to just one element so t of 1 and let's just say that the number of c's the number of constants we have here is k and we want to find this number to find it you can look at it this way we're dividing n by 2 here to get n over 2 and we're dividing n over 2 by 2 again to get n over 4 and so on until we get 1 but you can think of it as the opposite way so you multiply 1 by 2 to get 2 and so on and you get n over 4, you multiply by 2 to get n over 2, you get n by multiplying it by 2. And every time we divide n by 2 here, we get another c. And we divide this one by 2, and we get another c, and so on. And so the number of c's we have, k, is equal to the number of times we divide n by 2. And if you look at it from the opposite way, that's equal to the number of times we multiply 1 by 2 until we get n. And so we start with 1, let's just say, and multiply by 2 k times and we get n. So k, it's about n. And so k is about equal to log of 2n. So the total runtime for this function is going to be k times c plus this constant, but it's just a constant, so we're going to ignore that. And so the time complexity, or the total runtime, is going to be k, which is log of n times c, but it's a constant, so we can write it as big O of log of n. All right, that's it for the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find a link to the original article on Geeks for Geeks in the description below. And thanks for watching.